All right, guys, let me know how it, obviously, let me know how it looks and, you know, the whole nine yards. You know, the zero by zero, nice one. Let's do this. All right. So, Laura, Kaya, thank you for the five by five. Dan Phillips, thank you for the five by five before I actually get on the air. Appreciate it. Cat Girl, Paul F., Joseph, Ozark, Gene, By the Book, Eric, Juan, No Juan, Glenn, City Prepper, Casey, Bushpig, Winter Homestead. Thank you for the 5x5. Five five. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Just checking something out. All right. So, I have to start off by saying uh, I went to the Kentucky Sustainable Living uh, Festival. And the thing was really good, man. I, I, uh, I appreciate it. It was, uh, your, <laughs> sorry. Um, it was really good. It, it, I, 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 the networking was awesome. And a lot of the vendors there were really good. So over the next couple of days, I'm going to go over a couple of items that I found. And actually, one item I bought, one item is a loaner. And the loaner actually is uh, by Air Mobile Ministry. It's a water purification system and filtration system one of the best items any prepper community can possibly get their hands on but we're going to get into that uh, in a little bit all right so let me finish this off eli william henry sandra thank you for the five by five Gick rhymes lexi mossberg thank you for the five by five crow Tr trish sorry thank you for the five by five one second after Mary, Deanna, thank you for the 5x5. Five five. Leona, Silver, James, thank you for the 5x5. Five five. All right, sorry if I, I missed this. So, again, guys, uh, did you get sleep? I did. I, I got home probably about 7 o'clock this morning. Uh, I pulled a, you know, it was a 13-hour drive. I got here probably in about 12. It said 13 hours. I got here in about 12. So, I, I, I actually got here. I got to the Jersey side about 6 30 and i could not believe the amount of traffic coming into new york at 6 30 in the morning i thought i was gonna sail in and you know like be all good i got to the jersey the george washington bridge and i was like motherfuckers it, it was I, i've never seen so much traffic that early in the morning and, and granted everybody's coming into work i understand that i just never seen anything like it but um yeah it, it was it was an all right drive i i, I started i got to the six hour point and I was like, can I push? And then I, I was fine. I felt good. I wasn't tired. Uh, I, I pushed all the way till I got here. I got home. I started setting up shit. I did a couple of videos that I did this morning. And then I passed out. I was done. So I slept for about an hour. <clears throat> maybe two. So I, And I'm tired now. So when this is done and the angry truth is done, I'm going to go uh, right to sleep. But... Uh, yeah, it wasn't bad. You know, the drive wasn't bad. But, again, the Kentucky Sustainable Living, they're having another one in October. If I'm not mistaken, it's October 25th. I'm going to double-check right now. 25th and 26th. Let's see. Yes, the uh, 26th and the 27th. Sorry. October 26th and the 27th in the same area in Bowling Green, New York. Uh, Furman, thank you for the donation. I appreciate it. Um... Again, guys, he had one last October, and this was his second one in March, and he's doing another one in October. So a, a lot of vendors are showing up to these things. I think, guys, these kind of festivals, if you will, or gatherings are needed, right? They're, they're needed far beyond, um, far beyond, you know, for example, like the photography bullshit of Comic-Con or whatever it is. We need more of these things because the networking that goes on, you get to meet a lot of people. And I got to meet a lot of good people uh, this weekend. So it was pretty cool. Um, I got to speak at the end. And there were a lot more people that turned out for my uh, speaking engagement than I thought. I thought it was going to be five people. It's a Sunday afternoon. It's 3 o'clock. You know, people, they just done, you know, at that point. But I was pretty, I was pretty impressed with the turnout. So... It, that was fun in itself, too. The talking to people was fun. Again, meeting everybody, looking at what everybody had to offer. That was cool. It was a good time. I had, I, I enjoyed it. So um, there, I'm going to be going to more of these throughout the year. I'm, I, I won't be able to make every last one, 
but I definitely will be driving to a lot of these. So, yeah, again, I would almost, uh, Paul F., more, fa I don't, it, I wouldn't say I'm more famous, I just, I, I, people are just intrigued about how New Yorkers are going to react to the end of the world. I think that's what, what it is mostly. I think more people are, are curious, is, is he going to die? Is he going to live? So people follow this probably for that reason, because when the bottom drops out, and it, it, it inevitably will, um, it's just a matter of when, right? People are like, is this Negro going to survive? Is he going to die? So I think people are more curious about that than anything else. But the community side of the Kentucky Sustainable Living and festivals like it, guys, there's, there's nothing like it. And we need to be turning out to more of these events. So if there's an event, an event like this in your local area, go to the shit. You know, um, yeah, some of them are, are not, some of them are not great. I heard people complaining about one uh, two weeks ago or a week and a half ago, whenever it was. People were complaining about that one. Uh, but, you know, again, trial and error, right? Trial and error. But we need more of these. Bear had one about two weeks ago. His was his had a great turnout from what I uh, from what I gathered on his Instagram and his after action report that he sent out. So they did good. So again, I hope Bear does another one. I hope the uh, that that uh, crew does another one. I'm definitely turning out to it. And um, the driving is, is like just the worst part about it. It's just the driving because I do get a kick out of driving going to the event. But coming home sucks because I know what I'm coming home to. Uh, but I do get to open up the truck a little bit. So that that is the the other upside to it. Uh, it was called Kentucky Sustainable Living. It was an event that um, the Kentucky Sustainable Living people held out in Bowling Green, Kentucky. Uh, Jason is the name of the guy who ran the event. I interviewed him last week. You can look at a live stream. I think it was last Tuesday. Last Tuesday or, or Thursday, we did a live stream together. Uh, you could find that and just listen to him. Really down to earth guy. Uh, I got to see them. How do you say? Process a lamb. That was pretty interesting. I was waiting for somebody to pass out. But then again, you're in Kentucky and people don't pass out from shit like that. You know, they're used to it. I, I got a kick out of it. I was like, this is pretty cool to watch this shit get done. Did the chair go with you? No, but I might take the chair with me next time. Truthful troll. I might break the chair down and take take with me next time. What the fuck? Eating a leg. Eating a leg what? Yeah, whatever. Sorry. So anyway, guys, let's get on with the show. Um, again, the Kentucky Sustainable Living, the next event is the 26th and the 27th of October of this year. So do yourself a favor. Go to Kentucky Sustainable Living. I think it's .org or .com. Or rather, go to Kentucky Sustainable Living YouTube channel. Like and subscribe to that channel, and any one of their videos, they have a link taking you to the website where you can purchase tickets. I think they're going to start selling tickets next week, either this week or next week. Just stay tuned, but it's pretty soon. It's pretty soon. Uh, I, I, If I'm not speaking at that one, I'm still going to turn out to it anyway. It was fun. Uh, but yeah. Yeah, everybody's breaking my balls about how I spelled Kentucky wrong. I was like, I didn't even realize it. I'm like, why is everybody breaking my balls? And then when I want to go fix the, uh, you know, go add the added touches to the video, I'm like, holy shit, I did spell it wrong. I am half retarded. But anyway, so guys, let's get on with the show. So the tonight's subject, if you will, Kevin Grip, man, thank you for the donation. I appreciate it as always. Um, tonight's show. Blue cities, like New York City, are pretty much done, right? So, the bleeding hasn't stopped. We have a massive infection coming into the country, migrants, and that hasn't stopped. No one's done anything about it. In fact, it's gotten worse. New York City is financially bleeding, and nothing's being done about it. Eric Adams was had a town hall, and this is on, I think, New York 1, and he was sitting there pretty much just placing blame on the Biden administration. He's like, the buses were coming here. Legally, I can't stop them or turn them around. You know, I can't send them back because of the, the this law and that law. Like, he was just making up all the excuses in the world. So, undoubtedly, guys, this is going to get well out of hand. 
New York City is turning into a third world country. And that's a fact. Not my observation, not an opinion, it's a fact. You can walk down certain streets in Queens, certain streets in Brooklyn, and even now certain streets in Manhattan, and migrants are just spread out all over the place. In fact, migrants are selling clothes and essentially garbage on the street blocking sidewalks. And not just like a little table, a long table, and selling their shit there. They're like a block long of garbage and, and, and clothing and shit like that. They're probably getting clothing from those clothing bins that are still around. Um, I don't know where they're getting a lot of the other garbage that they're getting from. And they're selling, you know, they're selling like, you know, like a pen. You know, like a pen's on the floor. They'll sell that shit for like two bucks. They'll sell you a, an empty box, you know. It's, it's like, it's the craziest shit that they're selling. And granted, guys, you would rather them do that than turn to the life of crime. But it's only going to get worse because a lot of these people are not going to make money in that fashion. There are no jobs for them in the city. Zero. The first wave of migrants grabbed all the jobs. This second, third, fourth wave of migrants, they're not going to be able to get anything. There is nothing out there for them to do. So they have to turn to begging, stealing, selling themselves in the street, selling their kids. It's, again, only going to get worse. And wait till the gang violence starts. That's going to be like the icing on the cake. Now, granted, guys... We're going to see other issues as well. We might even see some uh, terror attacks behind all of this. Because with all of those people coming across the border, they're definitely sneaking in. I mean, look what happened to Russia. And I like the fact that the Russians beat the balls off of those guys. That was pretty impressive. Grant, and the, the, the other side is, I love that. I, when I saw that, I was like, that's how you're supposed to treat them. They're not supposed to be, you know, they're not supposed to come to an arraignment with nothing on their face. They should have both eyes closed. But that's a, a different subject for a different day. So the amount of problems we're going to start seeing, guys, it's, it's just inevitable. Now, the, the bad guys, if you will, coming across the border to terrorize the country, there's two sides to that. And I, and I hope you guys could bear with me on this one. There are two sides. One side is me. Actually, there, there might actually be a bad element coming across called ISIS or whatever terror group you can you could you know name coming across the border getting their troops here and waiting for the right time to pounce there is that but another side of me the conspiracy theory side of me always it's always running and i'm always looking at it as but what if the united states government uses this as an opportunity to do something and then blame and blame the borders being open there is also that. So there's two ways of looking at it. And if something goes down, guys, because we watched it happen in Russia, the FBI right now is sounding the alarm, if you will, about how this could happen here. No shit it could happen here. I mean, with a border wide open, you never know. You never know if it's going to actually be the group itself or the United States government. You don't know, right? And unfortunately, we won't know until, you know what? To be honest with you, we might never know. If something does happen, we might never know the truth. Because people are going to automatically start blaming the United States government. Then the other people are going to start blaming, uh, you know, the Taliban, ISIS, and all those other groups, you know, the third party, you know, uh, Muslim group, and the, the Ashali, Shalashad, fucking group, whoever it is, they're going to be blaming them. And we're never going to actually know the truth, right? I mean, you like 9-11, for example, that's a very, very... I guess, contentious conversation because there are people that say it was an inside job and there are other people that were saying the government let it happen and then there were people that was just saying it was the terrorists and the terrorists alone. So there's three arguments in the 9-11 on its own. Um, but you never know. So anyway, guys, um, with that, with the migrants doing what they're doing here, and again, this is New York City, I am going to do a walkabout. That's going to happen. I just got to pick a good spot. Um, I, I might want, want to do one here to show you guys the level of drug addicts and crime here. But I definitely want to go down Migrant Row and show you what that looks like. Uh, so stay tuned for those live streams. One might be in Queens. Another one might be here in Manhattan. 
but I'll definitely show you what that, that's going to look like. Uh, I do have to, I still have to do the one in Philly. I promise that one. I, I want to get that one done sooner than later. But uh, anyway, let's get on with the the day, if you will, or the subjects. So NYC to deny migrants right to shelter after compromise with activists. Before I get into that article, Eric Adams, the mayor of New York City, sat down, and you guys can look this story up yourself, I shit you not, sat down with a bunch of drug dealers who took over a Burger King, out of all places, a Burger King, whatever. They took over a Burger King, and they're running their drug operations out of this Burger King. Instead of having NYPD lock them up, beat them up, throw them under the bus, and then under the jail, he went to this make this Burger King with his... his uh, entourage if you will with a security detail and sits down with the drug dealers and starts having a conversation now no one knows what exactly was said and he is not addressing this which is a mayor should be answering to the people and i have a way to make them do that but a lot of people are not going to like the, the the route we have to go to make these politicians answer to us again different subject so he's talking to these drug dealers and he's talking to them about, I guess, moving operations and offering them jobs within the city. But I don't know at what capacity. So, again, here he is making deals, backdoor deals, if you will, with drug dealers. That's not good. With this, guys, the right to shelter, some of you might not know, but the right to shelter is you could... Come to the city today. You could be a millionaire, but you want a home. You want an apartment. New York City has to provide you with an apartment. They are now, New York City is now walking that back. They're walking the right to shelter with limited, not requirements, but I guess limited requirements to getting housed. And no longer is it indefinite. It's up to 30 days. And after 30 days, I think you have to reapply. Anyway, some illegal immigrants, and this is the post, by the way, labeling them illegal immigrants and not migrants. I like this. Some illegal immigrants to New York may be denied emergency housing resources due to the change in the state practice. New York City Mayor Eric Adams announced Friday that the city's infamous right to shelter policy, which mandates a bed be provided to any individual who requires it, would be significantly rolled back, again, with restrictions. Under the new term, individuals would have the right to 30 days of housing service upon entering into the city's aid system. Not being in the city, but being in the city's aid system. Following the 30-day window, the city can refuse individuals' re-entry into the system unless the individual has demonstrated that they have some sort of exenuating circumstances necessitating a short additional amount of time in a shelter or receives a reasonable accommodation due to a disability. Now, if you're a migrant and you're reading this and you say, oh, I got I have to have a disability to get more than 30 days, you coming all fucked up and shit, you'd be like, you I need home. And then they'll give you a home. They're not going to deny you that. Now, can you keep that act up? That's a different story. But if you also are missing a leg Technically, that's a disability. You'll get a home. But um, they are actually rolling back a lot. And I, I almost applaud the city for doing so. Right? So, Adam, the, back to the article. Adam sought to completely end the right to shelter requirement back in October 2023. This was almost two years ago. Citing the state of emergency due to the influx in migrant. Legal Aid Society, a non-for-profit civil legal group challenged the attempt and helped negotiate the current deal the reasonable the reasonable plan outlined in the settlement significantly enhances the city's ability to manage the extraordinary influx of people that have come into our care and will help stabilize our shelter system for those who really need it and this is new york city corporate council sylvia whatever the fuck her name is anyway with that guys this is a good step in the right direction. Here's the other side of that coin. The other side of that coin is you're going to have a lot of homeless dudes on the street. Now, if they're 
if they're with family, they get to keep the housing. Like if they have a little small baby and a small child and shit like that, and a, you know, a, a disabled child, they get to keep the housing. But a lot of these young single guys that are coming here by themselves, they're going to be 86 on the street. With that, you're going to see more tents popping up. You're going to see more dudes living and, and sleeping on the street. And you're going to see more homes being taken over. Now, there was a bill that was put into play to get rid of the squatters rights here in New York City. There are a lot of Democrats that are agreeing that they need to get rid of this. So this could work out and they could absolutely get rid of the squatters rights for a little while. The opposite side of that coin with squatter rights, though, is that now tenants can kick you out just because. That's the other problem. So there's always a drawback when something is changed. And again, it's just something to uh, keep in the back of your head if you live in New York City or a city like New York and they get rid of squatters rights. You could, you could suddenly find yourself on the street even though you are paying rent. Especially if you live in a house, in an apartment like this apartment, where the rent is pretty decent and it is well below market value. As soon as I leave this apartment, they're going to get market value for this apartment. All right. So anyway, the Haitians are starting their shit as per usual. They've been, listen, Haitians have been flooding New York, New York, the United States for a long time. They've been coming up to, they've been starting out in Florida and making their way up here. I know there's a migrant, uh, a Haitian population somewhere in either North or South Carolina. I'm, I'm not sure which state it is, but there's a fairly decent size. New York has one as well. So we have a decent size here. That being said, guys, the Haitian gangs are all but for sure going to head up here because of the laxed rules we have with crime. Imagine this is a criminal's haven. They come to New York City, they're like, oh my God, for all the people we can rape and steal from, New York City, this is the place to be. Because at worst, man, you get three hots and a cop, right? That's at worst. At best, they let you go every time you get arrested. And every criminal around the world sees that. Just pointing it out. Now, moving back to the Haitian. Haitian migrant boats with guns, drugs, intercepted in Florida. Over two dozen people this past month were discovered by Florida Fish and Wildlife Conservative Commission officers being smuggled into Florida. Including the group were unaccompanied children, armed smugglers attempting to make their way into Sebastian Inlet on February 9th, said the, said the statement on Friday, last Friday past. Law enforcement officials are continuing to investigate the case in which guns and drugs were seized from a 42-foot vessel in Brevard County, I don't know what that is, near the Indian River County line. Governor, Governor Ron DeSantis used it as a prime example for tougher laws. What the wildlife, I guess that's what WFC means, wildlife, fishing and wildlife commission, sorry, officers discovered on the boat, on a migrant boat. Reports said that the boat's operators were armed. They were, there were 25 people, including five unaccompanied children, on board the boat entering the county. Officers also found firearms, night vision gear, and drugs. Night vision gear. Now, night vision gear works can work two ways it could be for something more can be for something worse or it can just be for them to navigate the waters at night especially if they're going down canals and shit like that in florida it's probably what they were using them for but they didn't say how many and they're not telling us how many of what was was found and so they found drugs the exact details of the items in the boat were not released so, flood, so what did Florida Governor Ron DeSantis say about the armed migrant boat? DeSantis pointed out to the incident as an example for the need to deter illegal immigrants in a press conference this past weekend. Two separate laws signed by the governor would crack down on penalties and undocumented immigrants, illegal immigrants, driving <clears throat> without a license. And, <clears throat> and those who were re-entering the country after previously being deported. I like that because New York City, actually, on the Angry Truth channel, we're going to talk about something very, very important that's happening here in New York City. It started out in California. I think Detroit's doing it or they're, they're approaching to doing it. 
New York City is trying to get it done as well. This is very important because this is pissing off Democrats as well. Democrats are pissed. They're like, whoa, what the fuck? How did we get here? So we're going to be talking about that on the Angry Truth tonight at uh, 1010 or whatever time I decide to put it on. That, guys, is something you should definitely listen to, especially if you live in New York City. Uh, Larry goes, what's going on with Puff Daddy? Puff Daddy is having a rough fucking year. Holy shit, man. The shit that's going on with Puff Daddy is insane. I was wondering who was going to bring it up first. Puff Daddy is having a rough fucking time. Holy shit. And listen. Rightfully so. Puff Daddy is a dick. You can call him Dick Daddy. This guy was an asshole for a long, long time. Sidetracking from this real quick. He had a, a building downtown, uh, I guess, running his business out of it. And he had an office building. And I talked to one guy about 15 years ago, maybe 10, 15 years ago. Spoke to one guy. And he said that when Puffy walked in the building, people could not look at him. Like he was a king or some shit like that. And this guy tells me, the security guard tells me this shit. Like, Get the fuck out of here. There's no way anybody's that fucking arrogant. No way at all. With that... Five years later, I spoke to another security guard that I was doing security detail with at uh, some venue. And he said the same exact shit. With the exception of, he worked there a year prior to him and I meeting. So there was a four-year gap. And Puffy was still pulling that same shit. You couldn't look at him. Uh, everybody who, who talked to him had to sign an NDA. Everybody who spoke to him signed an NDA. And every musical group that signed with him... They signed their life away, meaning if you came in and I was going to start the Angry Prepper Band and it was a bunch of us just cursing into a microphone and shit saying, fuck shit, piss, fuck shit, piss, he would sign us, but we would sign our life away, meaning if we left him for any reason, he owned our name, he owned the band, he owned the rights to everything, and you were no longer able to make music. Look at all of the people who signed on the Puffy, look where their careers are now. They are all but non-existent because of him. All right, so just, he had this shit coming to him. So, you know, I, I, I like to say, fuck that dude. He, he had this coming to him, and it, and it came back at him fucking hard. Anyway, let's see where the fuck we were. Um, what did Ron DeSantis, all right. In the boat, in their vessel, they had firearms, they had drugs, they had unaccompanied children, they had night vision gear, and... And were boating very recklessly, which would have potentially endangered the other folks on the boat. Now, I don't know what recklessly driving looks like on a, on a boat, but, I mean, I get it. DeSantis said in the press conference, sorry, I, I fucked that up. In the press conference that the migrants were deported by the Coast Guard. So it was sent back to the country. Imagine that. Imagine that you're on, the, on this little tube, this boat, with like 20 other people that you don't know and possibly don't like. You get all the way to the United States, and it's Coast Guard's like, gotcha. And then they put you back on a boat or whatever it is and send you back to Haiti. Oh, man. That's got to suck a million dicks. The incident comes two months after DeSantis announced that he is sending approximately 1,000 Florida National Guards to Texas to assist with the security along the Mexican border. Last week, DeSantis also announced that he was shoring up the immigration security in Florida Keys, where he deployed 250 other officers and soldiers and other and over a dozen air and sea crafts to the southern coast of Florida to protect our states. Good for him. So, again, guys, with the Haitian, Haitians coming here, the Haitians are going to come here in full force. It's not going to be in trips and drafts like you would hope it would it would happen, but it's not going to happen that way. But what's going on there, I would say about in another week or so, we're going to start seeing uh, a, a decent influx. And then by a month, month and a half, we'll see a, a fairly large influx of Haitian migrants or illegal immigrants coming here. So with that, guys, the summer of love in the cities and cities like New York, blue cities being done and all, uh, gangbangers, again, this is from the Post, openly sell fake IDs, green cards to migrants on New York City streets as officials warn of danger. Criminals tied to MS-13 and other groups are selling fake green cards, I don't even know what the fuck that looks like, and social security cards 
to migrants on the street corners in Queens. Queens right now has a horrendously bad influx of migrants, uh, illegal immigrants. Horrendously bad. I've never seen anything so bad in a lot of the videos that I'm watching. It's like these people guys came here to get away from their bullshit country, but they are doing the same thing they did in their country here and making Queens and a lot of places in New York City look like their country, look like the shithole they came from. Anyway, let's see, let's see. This week, the Post spotted at least 10 men camped out in broad daylight at four different corners along Roosevelt Avenue in Queens, hawking. I haven't heard that term, hawking, in a long time. This guy's got to be in our age group. Hawking the bogus documents anywhere from $80 to $250 a pop. The forged social security numbers can be used to open up bank accounts and potentially obtain a real driver's license. Now, the snatching of purses and wallets and things like that and the pickpocketing that's going rampant right now downtown in Manhattan, they are stealing all your documents and using those numbers to forge more fake documents. This is why more or, 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 or heavier consequences need to be placed upon these people. Because what's happening now is they're getting locked up. These guys probably got arrested for selling this shit. And then they got kicked loose. Right? Because there's not much you could do with that. And there's a lot you could do with it as far as legally goes. But they're, they're letting them loose. They're like, oh, well, they don't know the laws. There have been a few lawyers and judges stating that these guys getting arrested don't know the laws that well. What? It, I mean... You, you go to any other country, and you're careful about how you navigate that country. At least the the the, the regular-minded person will go to another country. Be like, all right, you know, there's certain things I can't do here. I, I, I can, I can't do here. You come to this country and you're selling illegal documents. It's illegal. It, there, there's no other way around it. But a lot of these judges are having this sympathetic, bleeding liberal heart bullshit for them and going, well, they didn't really know. I like the. I don't know. Oh, why were you speeding? I didn't know I couldn't speed. You were doing 110. I didn't know that there was a speed limit. Can I play that shit with the cop the next time he pulls me over? No. You know? He was like, why were you dipping in, in and out of traffic? Because I was reenacting a scene from Fast and Furious. I didn't know I couldn't do that. You know? Like, that doesn't make any sense. And this is the, 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 the realm that they're playing right now. The forged security number. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Permanent resident cards also known as green cards, give migrants lawful rights to live, work in the United States. But they got to be fake looking. I mean, I don't know how people can look at those documents and go, oh, that looks real. Many migrants buy, buy the forgeries to land jobs where employees do not look carefully at the document, at the documentation. But others have much darker intentions. And this is why this is the problem. Because this is going to get way worse with the document stealing. And guys, they're still trying to they're still snatching purses and pickpocketing heavy here in New York. And and possibly other places where they're 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 heavy at right now. Many migrants buy sorry, sorry, sorry. Armed with such ID, a person could load up a truck with here we go. <laughs> okay. Armed with such ID, a person could load up a truck with certain devices, bring it underneath the Holland Tunnel or in the Holland Tunnel, and create something major and disastrous warned bruce whatever his name a special agent in charge a former special agent in charge of homeland security and he lives in new england i guess for someone that wants to do certain activities or is a national security threat it's easy to establish this second life within the u.s using those forged documents now obviously guys the more you pay the better looking those documents are if you want a job at mcdonald's they're not going to sit there and look at your document and you know they're not looking at the document like you know rubbing it and all that other bullshit they're just like all right you got something and that's all they care about that's if you're going to mcdonald's but if you're going for something with a little more security behind it like a pd job or fd job i would hope they look a lot closer at these documents Let's see, let's see. I guarantee right now, we, sorry, I guarantee right now, we're just waiting for another 9-11. On Wednesday, along Roosevelt between 82nd and 103rd Street, stretching from Jackson Heights to Elmhurst and Corona. This is where the uh, the activities are taking apart. 500 men gathered outside the Lagada Gosha Bakery, whispering social security to passerbyers 
and chatting up Spanish speaking clients near a massage parlor. I wonder if those are one of those rubbing tugs. Uh, one offered a post reporter pristine permanent residencies and social security cards for 80 bucks. They work, they work, the shady salesman assured, showing an example of the forged document on his phone. I need your name, your whole number, your age, and I can take your picture. Just like that. Anyway, sorry. Some of the group's members darted from the corners into the 86th Street stairwell, not a good one, below the Malandi Saloon, Salon, sorry, customers in tow. The cash handoff, the document pickup, takes place behind a glass door, according to the observer. Another fake ID peddler sitting in a chair outside of an insurance office offered a fake green card for 180 bucks and a social security card for, for 70 bucks. He said many people purchased the fakes but declined to specify how many he sold. Now, keep in mind, guys, this is being reported. This is out in the open, and I can guarantee you nothing's going to be done about it. Zero. If my car is parked on a meter and the meter expires, one minute later, those fucking retard traffic agents fall out of the sky in a zip line and give you a ticket for being one minute outside of not paying your meter. These people are outwardly in the open committing illegal crime legal activities nothing's being done about it imagine i get a ticket for running a red light which yes i know you're not supposed to be but i've done it and i get banged with you know 125 bucks but these people are pickpocketing getting arrested and then kicked loose almost immediately something is definitely wrong anyway roosevelt ad sellers are affiliates with the 18th Street Gang and with the ruthless MS-13. This is where this starts to get a little more interesting. Because MS-13 guys, they are pop... About a couple of years ago, I spoke to a, a police officer and he was talking about MS-13. He goes, they're not quite here yet. He goes, they're on the outskirts of Long Island. Don't know why they were out there. Nonetheless, they were out in Long Island. Now they are in the cities. They are, they're here in the city. And MS-13 has been building a reputation for the last few years. So there's undoubtedly going to be some kind of gang challenge coming really, really soon. Both gangs originated in Los Angeles and are rivals known for violence and drug dealing, but also selling fake IDs. It's a big business, one of the sources said. A, a trans, transnational criminal organization running the mills also may have helped smuggle in migrants, creating a one-stop shop for undocumented newcomers or illegal immigrants. Their area has also been a hotbed for prostitution. I talked about that many times. That is also where the sex trafficking comes from. So there goes another nightmare. Women and kids being kidnapped. A lot of migrant parents are losing their, they're losing their kids. I think some of these people are selling their kids as well. And their kids are disappearing and ending up in somebody's fucking house. All right, so again, guys, this article is pretty long. I'm not going to go through the whole thing. But um, the whole fake ID, guys, they, they're, they're also saying that there are a lot of things that they can do with that, like, you know, buy firearms. So it's a little tougher to buy firearms with fake IDs than it is uh, to buy a truck, load it up, whatever you have, and go kabloom. So there is that. Now, this is more interesting. I told you guys before that we were going to see a lot more of, you know, migrants selling shit. So you got migrant kids who look no older than five hawking, again with the word hawking, water bottles on a dangerous NYC road. Now, the reason why this is dangerous, guys, because these are young migrant children um, selling water bottles on the side of a road. That means anybody who's driving by who wants to diddle a kid, he's looking at that kid goes, oh, I never had a little, you know, a little fucking... Mexican kid or, or South American kid, let me snatch him off the street. The kid's like fucking five years old. Let's see. Let's, let's show you a picture of what the kid looks like. That's as young as the kid is selling water. Don't look like he's selling water. Looks like he's selling something else, but not the point. That's a child. That's a very adaptable child that you can take off the street into your van, as you can see there, um, right before him. It, doesn't, it only takes a second for these kids to be snatched up and go missing right and then you have 
this one here. Again, another child who probably, he probably looks about maybe seven, eight years old. Still, no child under the age of 15 should be out here selling water in a strange country off a busy highway where you can get abducted yet again. And to boot, there were no parents anywhere in sight. They were completely on their own. So again, guys, the migrant situation is a compounded situation. It's not just like one thing. It's a multitude of things. And now New York City is has, not will, has fallen to the migrants. New York City is going to start looking like a third world country within a matter of months, maybe weeks. Right now, you can go to certain spots in Queens and it already looks like that. You can go to certain spots in Manhattan and it already looks like that. Not to mention New York City's also and still battling a drug problem that's starting to grow. I see more drug addicts here in this neighborhood every day. There's actually a couple that hangs out on a hill, one of the hills, when I do my angry prepper fitness walks up the hill, there's a couple that hangs out on the hill. The two or three times I've walked up the hill, they've been in the same exact spot doing something with drugs in their hands. I don't know what exactly they're doing, but they have drugs in their hand. So let's finish this article out. Do I really want to finish this article out? You get the gist of it, guys. They're young kids selling water bottles off the highway. They are undoubtedly going to, something's going to want, or, or, or worse, but there's nothing worse than actually them getting kidnapped other than them getting killed. And that's the other problem. Stepping in front of a car that small, stepping in front of an SUV or truck that small, you can definitely, you can definitely get hurt and or killed in a hurry being that small. So, again, guys, this is just an ongoing problem that New York is it, that is New York is dealing with, and is only going to get worse. I need to. There are a couple I heard of tent cities, and I mentioned in my video that they were talking about putting them in parking lot. Apparently, there are tent cities all over the city. So I'm going to go look for those. Uh, try not to get raped and robbed, and probably not in that order. But you know, try to do my best and and report what I'm seeing. Um, there's a guy named Cash Jordan or Jordan Cash. He's a, I guess he lives in New York City. He's definitely not a New Yorker, but however he, he did it, he, uh, he did a YouTube channel based on what's going on. So there's a facility downtown Fulton Street that they built. Now, I didn't notice. I walked in and out of that facility half a dozen times, if not more. I never realized that there were stores in there. At least maybe when I walked through it, there weren't stores in there yet. Anyway, Westfield, the mall company, opened up a bunch of stores in there. But people were ripping off everything in those stores that the stores in the Westfield Mall area in Fulton Street pulled out. And then Westfield pulled out because they had no stores in there anymore. And not to mention people are running in there and just stealing shit. If it's not tied down, it's in their pocket or in their hand. Now, NYC tried to put police officers in there, but all the businesses are gone. It's too late. Even if, if I'm not mistaken, I think even the Dunkin' Donuts is gone. But anyway, guys, Jordan, is it Jordan Cash? Not Cash Jordan? All right, Jordan Cash, thank you. Um, like, you know, it, I didn't even realize that. So, you know, I'm going to go down there and, and look around myself. But I know that, that I'm more interested in the drug dealing that's right around the corner from that Fulton Street train station. So, again, uh, Jordan Cash, when he had that video, he was talking about it. He had one thing, he had a couple things wrong. That's what, that, what led me to believe he's not a New Yorker. He's a transplant trying to pretend he's a New Yorker. But he sat there and said that the cops, because Port Authority runs another facility called the Oculus down the, um, down the block from it. And then the Oculus is run by Westfield as well. It's a mall area. And they're not seeing the same amount of crime in there. And he goes, because NYPD, uh, they don't have the manpower. Bullshit. NYPD has been restricted on how they, they approach criminals. In fact, they've been instructed not to handle or manhandle people stealing from stores. Now what are they supposed to do? But then they were supposedly given a green light a few months ago, maybe? They were, Adriana says Cash Jordan. All right, it is Cash Jordan, not Jordan Cash. Yeah, sorry about that. All right, so whatever. It's a white guy who lives in New York City reporting uh, the shit that goes on. So anyway... PD just doesn't approach crime the same way they used to anymore. And, and, and that's what it comes down to. Port Authority, on the other hand, 
they don't have to answer to the same assholes that NYPD has to answer to, right? So Port Authority, on the other hand, can handle it accordingly. You you push back, you, you resist arrest, you catch a beating. NYPD, there's just all of this bullshit that's just, you know, Valley Parks at Westfield has a sad, bad history. Listen, the other thing about Westfield is I don't care. You know, Westfield is a multi-billion dollar company that puts in fucking, you know, malls and makes money. And they actually rape a lot of the um, smaller businesses there, right? So if you want to open up a little store in a the mall, they hammer the fuck out of you just to open up something, you know? Uh, Texas. There's two options. One option is I can retire by the end of next year, which I'm going to start entertaining uh, the beginning of next year. So in January next year, go see the pension guy, talk to them, and see what they tell me my numbers are. If there's a greater amount of money I'm going to make, if I stay the extra five years, I'll stay the extra five years. I can do another five. I can do another five standing on my head. As long as I stay in shape and keep doing what I'm doing, I'll be fine. Um, so I could I could be leaving by the end of next year, or I could be leaving in five years. And if I leave in five years, that gives me thirty years of uh, city service. I'll be fifty-two, right? So um, that's the that's the option I'm looking at right now. But before that, um, I'm definitely moving. Not def I'm moving out of the city. Like I'm done with the city. I'm done with having to circle the block eight thousand times to look for parking. And bad enough, you got people taking up parking spots as it is. You've been saying retired for years. Uh, no, I haven't. I, I retired and I came back. Uh, Joseph, I could probably I could move near Bears Bears area. I could definitely go there, but I'm trying to branch out. I'm looking at Tennessee. Right, so there's that. But um, uh, transfer where? Transfer to another fire service? It doesn't work like that with us. Unfortunately, the FDNY, we don't have the same requirements or certificates, certifications that other places. Like if I, if people are like, oh, you're an FDNY firefighter, they'll take you anywhere. Not really. <clears throat> In other places, they have certifications for a lot of different things. That they probably never do and never come in contact with. But nonetheless, they have a lot of certifications <coughs> we do not get. We get training on those things, but we don't get certification. Right? So I can't just go to West Bubble Fuck Kentucky and be like, hey guys, I'm a New York City fireman. You know, just hire me and I'll, you know, it don't work that way. It's not the same. And listen, I don't want to be a fireman anywhere else other than here. After I'm done here, I am not going into anybody else's fire service. There is nothing like being a New York City fireman. Nothing. There is other cities that can closely compare, but I'm not going to fucking, you know, West Bubblefuck, Arkansas to be a firefighter and, and deal with somebody's trailer catching fire. I'm not doing that. The fires out here and the shit that we deal with out here is good shit. You know, it's fun. It's real. It's dangerous. A lot of this shit you deal with out there, you're, you're putting water on a fire and you're standing fucking 100 feet away from it doing so. I want my fucking heart to be in my throat every time I go to a job. And it's not every time you go to a job here, but you're definitely not going to get that out there. Yeah, but... um, No, we and uh, we don't have, wild, we don't have uh, wildfire training at all. Like, at all. You know, we, they just let's put just put the water on the on, on the red shit. That's it. That's that's all we do. We don't have that. We don't have that kind of certification. I was looking into that, and you needed a, you needed an arm ticket to to do that. I'm like, ah, whatever. Can't do that now. You know, I mean, I could probably if they got rid of the arm ticket, I could probably consider joining one. I always wanted to do one of those hot shot groups. I would have to get in even more. I would have to get in phenomenal shape to be a hot shot. 52 is still young. Yeah, tell my fucking knees that, all right? At 52, I think I'm, I'm, I'm pretty sure I'm going to be in a wheelchair because my knees have given up on me. 
you'll deal with, with wildfires. I mean, yeah, obviously when you leave here, you deal with... I mean, we do have brush fires and shit like that here, but they, we, I wouldn't consider that a wildfire, you know, like a, a wildland fire. I consider that just what it is, a brush fire. But, yeah, listen, I mean, don't get me wrong. There are some fire services that would probably, you know, take us as we retire and, and want to make us chiefs and shit like that. You still got to do the training. You still got to go through how they do things. I'd rather not, man. I'd rather just, like, like retire. I'd rather either do photography uh, or bird watching. Because that's what old people do when they retire, right? They bird watch and shit. I'd rather do that. I'm like, I'm going to watch some birds today. And I'm going to take some pictures. Sound like an old gay black man when you fucking, when, when that comes out of your mouth. I'm going to take some pictures of birds, you know, and flowers. Anyway, that's what happens when you get old, man. You just fucking, just start doing old people shit. I'm pretty sure when I retire, I'm going to try to become a bingo champion. I think that's my aspirations in life, to become a bingo champion. Start beating out all these old people that are playing bingo. Bingo champion is it, or Parcheesi, or whatever the fuck old people play. You know, nap time. I'll be a nap champion, fucking napping the longest. Whatever games old people play, I'm definitely going to uh, try to see if I can beat them out on it. If they have a walker's race, I'll definitely do that. You know, you take a walker... And you and an old lady racing with a walker and you just throw a fucking stick in front of her and watch her collapse on that. That's fun. That doesn't get old. So, guys. This summer, things are going to get very interesting for major cities. So, what I would advise a lot of people to do is try to stay out of the city. If you do not have to come here, don't. Do yourself a favor and avoid the city at all costs. I know some of you guys uh, have kids that want to come to the city. Just tell them to keep their head on the swivel. Tell them to, to keep their radar up and everybody is a question mark to them. Don't sit there and think everybody is your friend, when you come to, especially when you come to the city. Not everybody's your friend. There are people out here, and, and, and forget about it. With the migrants running here and the scams that they're running, you got to be extra Johnny on the spot with a lot of shit. Again, keeping your wallet in the front, making sure that your bag is on your side and not on your back if you can if you're walking through a heavy crowd, you know, um if you can carry mace, absolutely get mace. If you live outside of the city, guys, get mace. Get two of them. John Wick with the mace if you have to. Spray the shit out of their eyeballs so they can't fucking see anymore or they're bleeding. If you are carrying, fuck them. Carry. Bring it into the city if you have to. If shit gets out of control, use it. But only use it if you absolutely have to. With mace, you don't have to be sparing with that. Just spray their eyeballs out. Fuck them. You know, I mean, it, it, it's a lot of shit, guys, is going to get a lot more intense with the crimes in the city. Especially what, what I'm starting to see is possible gang violence. And gang violence increasing. Now, gang violence was increasing on its own. But the American gangs, if you will, that were here. The different sets of bloods and the different sets of crips going after one another was out of control. But now enter these migrant gangs and there are new gangs popping up within the migrant community. So you have MS-13 that's already established. You have that, well, that Venezuelan gang that's already established. Here, that is. And you possibly have new migrant gangs popping up because they don't like how... Uh, what is that? Tren de Agua, whatever they're called, or Agua, and or MS-13 run, they're going to start their own shit. And there's nothing worse than a gang branching off and starting their own set. That just breeds problems and violence. That's what it breeds. And it gets bad after a while. And now you have that going on. American gangs going, yo, they're taking over our block. We're gonna see some. We're gonna see some violence this summer. And if the summer's hot, on top of that, forget it. It's definitely good. It's, it's gonna be a shit show that's gonna fall apart without a doubt. Without a doubt. So protect your family, guys. Protect yourselves if you come to the city. I know a lot of you guys are like, I'm never coming to the city. Don't. If you do not have to be here, do not come here. But if you come here, like I said, just keep your head on the swivel, man, because shit's gonna get crazy. And again, you also don't want to. You don't want to lose your wallet. The way they're picking pockets here is like some shit I've never seen. Never seen it. Uh, Kermit, it doesn't matter if Mace is illegal or not. Carry it. People are like, well, it's illegal. We have illegals running around. The last thing I'm worried about is my mace or my baton or my knives being illegal. 
That's the last thing I'm worried about. The, the, it's bad enough that the cops are, are locking up homeowners for changing locks on their home. Now we have to deal with illegal immigrants and, and we have to be scared of being caught by the cops because we might be carrying a weapon. Fuck that shit. Carried on up. Wasp spray is, is legal, yes, uh, Billy, but it's bulky and it's heavy. Wasp spray is fucking huge. I mean, like, just take this for an example. It's sort of like this, just not as wide, but it's still big as hell, man. But you can definitely carry that. Mace used to be illegal in New York City. I don't know if it's legal now, as per se, but I remember... Uh, my wife was carrying mace one time and they were breaking her chops about it. It's it's like one of those gray areas. Well, let's look it up. Is is mace, I say is mace I go is mace illegal in New York City? What the heck is going on? Illegal immigrants detail. What? I wanted to know if all right, well, you know what? Let's say pepper spray. I, I typed in that. The computer's so used to me. Is pepper spray illegal in New York City? There we go. And of course, I can't find a simple fucking answer. Because I'm using Google, that is. Oh, sorry. I fucked that up. Here's everything you need to know. Pepper spray is legal in New York for anyone... 18 years or older. So pepper spray is legal in New York. But is it legal in New York City? Regarding pepper spray in New York City, are quite specific sections. Oh, come on, dude. Carry, sir. So it looks like it's legal to carry pepper spray on your person in New York City as well. So it is legal in New York State. It's legal in New York City as well. That's good to know. So you know, listen, guys. Even it will, if, even if it was illegal, who cares? Carry it. If it's going to protect you, who gives a shit, right? If you have brass knuckles, carry those. If you have brass knuckles, I I only. If you have brass knuckles, know how to use them. Know how to punch, rather. Sorry, know how to punch. Don't carry brass knuckles if you don't know how to throw a punch. They both go hand in hand. Because you can hurt yourself just as bad as the other guy you're hitting. But you can hurt yourself as well if you don't know what you're doing. You could throw a punch without brass knuckles and hit the guy the wrong way and break your shit. Both of you will be in pain. So keep that in mind. Um, but if you're going to carry brass knuckles, know how to know how to, you know how to punch with that. Uh, bear spray is good too. Just remember you're standing downwind. Make sure the wind is on your back. right? It's going away from you, not to you. Don't spray... If the wind's on the, the assailant's back, on the bad guy's back, if the wind is on his back, do not spray pepper, this pepper spray or bear spray or any kind of spray. Don't spray it because then it'll be in your face and both of you will be rolling around the ground for hours in pain. So don't do that. If you know that you're going to spray this mace, pepper spray, bear spray, circle around to the wind is on your back, then spray it. And when you spray it, make sure you outreach your arm as well. Don't spray like this close to the chest because there's always splatter and it's going to get in your eyes and you're going to be rolling on the ground with the guy. Both of you are going to look like fucking assholes rolling around the street. And the cops roll up. Who's the bad guy? Both of, them are, both of you are crying. Don't do that. You got to extend your arm and make sure the wind is uh, on your back. Yeah, spray into the wind. Yeah, go ahead. Spray into the wind. Watch what happens after that. Oh, the knife rule is weird, in, uh, uh, Adriana. The knife rule is very weird. Um, it's all over the place. Some people like you can have a knife as long as if it's four fingers. Some are saying there was a law that they passed that it can't even have an edge on it. So the knife thing, it doesn't matter. If you're using it to protect yourself, guys, who cares? Who gives a shit? There are people carrying guns left and right all over the city. The migrants are carrying firearms all over the city. Don't worry about it. Worry about it after you get locked up. And if you used it to protect yourself, I can all but guarantee you, you're going to get out of that situation. Uh, stun guns, they do have the pepper spray ball, the pepper ball uh, guns now. They said it's legal in New York State, I think, but not New York City. But if you do use it, you're not going to get held accountable for it. Like, obviously, if you use it because you're protecting yourself, you're not going to get rolled for that. 
But if you are sticking people up and you use it, yes, then you can go to jail for it. So the laws, guys, in any in a lot of states, laws are flexible. And and a lot of people seem to be they're ironclad. They're not ironclad. You can you can have nunchucks, for example, start whipping ass with them, and then if you were protecting yourself and your wife from getting raped, they're not gonna charge you for having nunchucks. I'm just using that as an example because someone threw it in here, right? If you have a collapsible baton and you used to be a security guard, well, you're about to get mugged and you go upside this guy's head and beating him within an inch of his life. Don't beat him within an inch of his life. Just a couple of hits, make it hurt and make them go away. You're not going to get rolled for having that. You, you, everything is flexible, guys. The laws are always flexible as long as you used it in your protection. You know, if you whip out a gun and this guy was raping a girl and you got him off him and you put one in his leg but he survived you might get charged with possession but it'll definitely get knocked down to a misdemeanor charge and they'll kick you loose especially if you if you foil the crime and a heinous crime at that right so again laws are flexible they're not ironclad and i know this because i've been in trouble a few times so like i said laws are not ironclad billy clubs are, are, are good if you can find one of those uh, collapsible batons are better because they're collapsible. I wouldn't go with a nightstick. My father has his old nightstick. I do want to whip that out and start whipping ass with that one. He has his nightstick from back in the days when he was a cop. So, uh, I know they still have it. So, if they do, I should see if I can get my hands on it and start fucking... What do they call... They used to call that the Bronx shampoo or the wooden shampoo. Cops used to call that the wooden shampoo because you would crack them over the head with it. Anyway, that being said, guys, I'm going to go off the air now. I'm going to head over to the Angry Truth Channel. I think I went over a little bit, but whatever, it's okay. I'm going to hang over to the Angry Truth channel. Uh, I'll see some of you guys over there with that. With this, I'm sorry, this week I will be on Thursday for the doubleheader as well. I will not have a Wednesday midweek report because I'll be at work. I might do one when I get home around 6 o'clock or so. I might. But other than that, guys, I will see some of you guys on the Angry Truth channel. The rest of you guys for the doubleheader on Thursday night. Other than that, guys, thank you for watching. Thank you for donating, and I'll see some of you later.